بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد الحمد لله رب العالمين we give thanks and praise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has given us another opportunity of praying Salat al-Isha in Jama'ah and who has given us life, who has granted us life in order to reach the year of 1441 of Hijri. We know very well about the Hijri in regards to the new Islamic year and we've been hearing about Muharram we've been thinking about the holidays of Saturday or Sunday that's all gone but what do we need to know in regards to the Hijri how it came into existence what is the virtue and importance of the Islamic calendar? And what is Muharram? The virtues of Muharram, the virtues and importance of fasting in Muharram, and the mistake that people do in Muharram. Insha'Allah, this is what we're going to speak about today, bi'idhnillah ta'ala. I try to make it quick. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came in, born and raised in Mecca, from Mecca, migrated to Medina and passed away in Medina Munawwara. Back in the days, they did not have anything called the, the year. Like for example, the year. They had the month, Muharram, Safar, Rabi'ul Awwal, Rabi'ul Thani, the days, but the year they didn't have. So how they used to recall a year? By the event of what happened during that year. Let's say for example, we always hear about the year of elephant, Amul Fil. They never used to use numbers, or oh, this used to happen for example, 610 uh, after Christ. No, nothing like that. Back in the days, when it comes to speak about the year, they would say the, the biggest event happened on such a year. For example, as for the year of the elephant, they would call it Amul Fil, the year of the elephant. The year in which Badr happened, they would say the year of Badr, the year of Uhud. The year of sorrow, when the Prophet Muhammad lost his wife and his uncle. So, this is how it used to happen. And the Prophet Muhammad passed away. Abu Bakr took over. Umar bin Khattab took over after Abu Bakr. We know very well at the time of Umar bin Khattab, Islam is spread in many places. Islam is spread many places, Egypt, the north, the south, and east, and the west. Islam is spread many places. So the Sahaba was put in charge in different countries. There was a Sahabi by the name of Abu Musa al-Ash'ari who was in Iraq, in Basra. He was receiving letters, he was receiving notes and script from Umar bin Khattab. And this script was not dated. There was no date on it. So which year this was written, when it was sent. So Abu Musa al-Ash'ari wrote a letter to Amir al-Mu'mineen Umar bin Khattab and told him, listen, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, we need to come up with our own date. The Christian had the date. The Persian have the date. Even now, you know, the Chinese, they have a date. We need to have our own date. So Umar bin Khattab, when he got that letter, what did he do? He brought the Sahaba, and then he asked them, we need to come up with a date, or Islamic calendar. 
when do we start the month and the year so the sahaba start saying let's start the islamic year as from the birth of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam some of them said let's start the year at the death of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam uthman bin affan and ali bin abi talib they said let's start the year as from the hijra of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so now the hijra of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is like a different phase of islam it's different so now Uthman bin Affan and Ali bin Abi Talib, they suggested, let's start the Islamic calendar as from the Hijri of the Prophet Sallallahu as from the Hijra of the Prophet Sallallahu the migration. So the migration year will be the first one. So they agreed to this. So the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu almost 17 years before he migrated to Medina, so let's make this at the first year of Islamic calendar. They all agreed. So the year was agreed. And then they were like, what about the month? Which month do we make the first month? So if you have a year, you need to have the month now. Yes or no? Like you have a year, now you need to have January, February, March. So in the Gregorian calendar, the first month is January. So what about Islamic calendar? So again, the Sahaba start suggesting. Some said, let's start Ramadan. Let's make Ramadan the first month. Some said, let us make the Hijjah the first month of Islam. Then Umar bin Khattab thought about it. Then he was like, listen. The Hijjah, the last pillar of Islam is done in the Hijjah, yes or no? Which is, which is Hajj. So since the last pillar of Islam, Hajj, is done in Dhul Hijjah, let's make Dhul Hijjah the last month. And we make Muharram the first month. So it was at the time of Umar bin Khattab that the Islamic calendar started. So then they came to the conclusion that, okay, the, the first year of Islamic calendar would be the time the Prophet ﷺ migrated from Mecca to Medina and the first month is going to be Muharram. So since the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ migrated from Mecca to Medina, today how many years? 1441. So today is 1441 Islamic calendar since the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu migrated from Mecca to Medina, it's called the Hijrah. That's why they call it the Hijri. The Hijri calendar means the Islamic lunar calendar, which is based upon since the time the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu migrated to Medina. So this is in regards to how the Tariq or how the year started Islamically. Great. Now we want to speak about the years. Sorry, the month. The month was there. Muharram, Safar, Rabi'ul Awwal, Rabi'ul Thani, Jamad al Awwal, Jamad al Thani, Rajab, Sha'ban, Ramadan, Shawwal, Dhul Qa'idan, Dhul Hijjah. That was there from before. Even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran in Surah Tawbah, verse number 36, Inna idada shuhuri inda Allah ithna ashara shahrum fi kitab illahi yawma khalaqa samawati wa arda minha arba'atun hurum thalika al-din al-qayyum falata wa dhalmu fayhinna Allah the ayah. Allah Azza wa Jalla says in the Quran in Surah Tawbah, For verily the number of the month in the eyes of Allah Azza wa Jalla are how much? Twelve. The day Allah Azza wa Jalla created the heaven and the earth. Allah Akbar. So the month was there. The day Allah Azza wa Jalla created the heaven and the earth, the 12 months was already established. Allah Akbar. Minha arba'atun hurum. And among these 12 months, four of them are sacred. 
فلا تظلموا فيهن انفسكم in these four months do not transgress yourself i'm going to explain what is this these four months according to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam they are same thing according to abu bakr radiyallahu an he said that the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that for verily in the eyes of allah azza wa jal there are 12 months the day he created the heaven and the earth and then he said three of then four of those months are sacred three of them are consecutive and what are these four months three of them are consecutive the qi'dah the hijjah muharram and then rajab not ramadan rajab okay and nabi sallam he said it three of them are consecutive the qi'dah the hijjah and muharram and then rajab Great. فَلَا تَظْلِمُوا فِيهِنَّ أَنفُسَكُمْ Do not transgress yourself in these four months. What does that mean? It means that in these months, the good deeds that you do are great in reward. The sin that you do could be more in punishment. So Allah is saying that do not transgress yourself. A dhul. When you fall into haram, it's dhul. As well as do not fight in these months. There should be no fighting in these months. Except if the non-Muslim, they initiated, then we can defend. But to go and fight and initiate any fight or battle in these months, it's not allowed. If ever you were to look at it, the wisdom behind it, look at it. What do you think about the Qi'dah, the Hijjah, and Muharram? You are not allowed to fight. It has to be a peaceful three months. Why? Because one month before Hajj and one month after Hajj. The Qi'dah, no fighting. People have to travel to Hajj. There should be no, it has to be safe the journey. In the Hijjah, no fighting, it's Hajj time. And after the Hijjah is Muharram, people have to go back home, so the journey has to be safe. So these three months, Allah has made it sacred, you're not allowed to fight. Oh, everyone's supposed to be safe. The Qi'dah, the Hijjah, Muharram, and then we have Rajab. So this tells you now about the calendar of the Muslim. How it started, where does it come from? The month was already there. The year was initiated by Umar bin Khattab as well as the numbers of the sequence, not the sequence, which, which month come first? Uh, Muharram was done by Umar bin Al-Khattab. Muharram. Now we're on the month of Muharram, and what does it mean? Muharram comes from the word Ashur al Haram. Haram. When we say Haram, what does Haram mean? It means boundary. It means sanctity. It means something that very special. Something very special. Even Ramadan with a name by this word. Even the Hijjah with a name at this. Muharram, even at the time before the Prophet ﷺ, it was a big deal. Muharram. In this month, the Quraysh were fasting. In this month, the Jews fasted. In this month, the Christian fasted. In this month, the Muslim was fasting. Muharram, sanctity, special. This is what it means by, by this month. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, so this month, number one, it is known as Shahrullah Muharram. 
and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Abdul Siyam Bad Ramadan Shahrullah Muharram. The best of fasting after Ramadan is Shahrullah, the month of Allah Muharram. Ajib. Shahrullah, the month of Allah, this month we are in now. Muharram, which is this month, the fast that you do in these days are beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This one, it tells you the importance of fasting in this day. What important event happened in Muharram? Why it became so special? Muharram, how do we come to know about this is, of course, we speak everything from the, from the Quran and the Sunnah. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma, he said that when the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to Medina, he found the Jews fasting on the 10th of Muharram. You know in Medina there was Jews, there was Christian, yeah, and there was of course the Munafiq and of course the Muslim. When the Prophet Muhammad asked the Jews, why do you fast on that day? The Jews, they said, this day is the day, is a blessed day. This day is a blessed day for us. This day was the day which Allah Azza wa Jal saved Musa alayhi salatu wassalam from Fir'aun. So Musa alayhi salatu wasalam fasted on that day. So we Jews, we fast on that day. So the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasalam said, you Jews, you fast on that day because the Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, nahnu ahaqqa bi Musa minkum. We are more beloved to Musa than you. So we are going to fast as well. So this fast, because of this, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasalam, because Allah Azza wa Jal saved Musa alayhi salatu wasalam on that day. Great. So now, this fast was a fast that even the Muslim used to fast before in Mecca. This fast was a compulsory fast before Ramadan came in, the fast of Ramadan came into place. So once Ramadan came, Allah Azza wa Jalla made Ramadan compulsory, then this one became mustahab, became something sunnah. So fasting in, on the 10th of Muharram is called Ashura, and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he fasted on that day and then he said, I hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive the sin of one year previously. So whoever fasts on the 10th of Ashura, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will insha'Allah forgive the sin of what you have done the previous year the sin of what you have done the previous year. So this is in regard of fasting inshallah on Ashura, which is going to fall on Sunday, Sunday or Monday. I believe on Monday. So let, let me count it. So the first was Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Monday. Monday is going to be the Ashura, him with name. So whoever fasts on that day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, insha'Allah, will forgive his sin of one previous year. Great. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in many of his ibadah and habits and conduct, 
he many times deferred from the Ahl al-Kitab, from the people of the book, the Jews and the Christian. For example, the Jews and the Christian, the Jews when they eat, they talk too much. The Christian when they eat, they don't talk at all. Yeah? So the Prophet Muhammad said, so when we eat, we talk a little bit. They came to the Yahud and Nasara so that we differ from the Jews and the Christian. They may eat with their left hand, we eat with the right hand to differ from them. The Prophet Muhammad said, Leave your beard and trim your mustache, wa khalif al majus. Leave your beard and then trim your mustache and be different from the fire worshippers. So the Prophet Muhammad wanted us to have our own identity. Our own identity. So the Sahaba to the Prophet, Ya Rasulullah, the Jews and the Christians, they fast on that day. And the Prophet Muhammad said, For verily, next year, I am going to, to fast the ninth of Ashura in order to differ from the Jews and the Christian. Great. But unfortunately, the Nabi passed away the very next year. That was his intention. So, we as Muslim, we make it two days. We fast the ninth and the tenth. Ta'su'a and the tenth Ashura, we make it two days. But now, let me tell you something. Don't be confused. Fasting on Muharram in Muharram is meritorious. You know, some fil Haram matruk and Nabi Sallallahu said, fast a lot in the month of the Haram, like the Hajjah, the Qa'da, Rajab and Muharram. Fast a lot for very fasting in these months are very rewarding. So let's say we want to, there are three ways of fasting in the, uh, for the Ashura. The first one is, which the ulama say, which is better. You fast the ninth and the tenth. Because the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu he intended to do that the following year. So you fast Sunday and Monday together to differ from the Ahl al-Kitab, the Jews. Or you may fast Monday, Tuesday which is the 10th and the 11th. This is a little bit weak, just to differ from the Jews and the Christian. Or you fast on neither the 10th. If you fast only on Monday, it is okay. That does not make you a Jew. Like some people say, oh, you fasted only one day, you have to fast one more day, otherwise you become a Jew. No. If you want to fast only one day, you get the Ajr. If you fast only on Ashura, you get the reward of Allah Azza wa forgive your sin. If you fast on Tasu'a and Ashura, if you fast on the ninth and the tenth, you get reward and then you get reward of differing from the Ahl al-Kitab. You decide according to your capacity, فَاتَّقُوا ما استطعتم. Fear Allah as much as you can. Even if you don't fast at all because you cannot, it's okay. You will not be sinning because it is mustahab. Some ulama say it is sunnah mu'akkada. It is emphasized sunnah. You do it, get reward. If you don't do it, you will not be sinning because it is not compulsory. It is not compulsory. This is in regards to the sunnah, the, the siyam. Whatever I did not mention now, it's not then Muharram. If you hear now, you're going to hear many things. Let me tell you the mistake that are done in Muharram. Muharram, the significance of Muharram is that Allah Azza wa Jal has made this month a month of 
sanctity, sacred month. And Allah Azza wa Jal saved Musa والسلام, on that day. And it is said, even Allah Azza wa Jal saved Nuh والسلام, on that day. According to the Murrikhun, according to the historian, the day Allah Azza wa Jal saved Nuh والسلام, from his people, you know, in the ark when it was flooding, it was on the 10th of Muharram. So, this is the significance. Apart from this, no. What are the mistakes that are found in Muharram? The bid'ah that are found in Muharram. The shirk that people do in the month of Muharram, let me tell you in brief. That has no base in Islam whatsoever. People from the 1st of Muharram until the 10th of Muharram, they do some kind of special adhkar, dhikr, every day of the Isha. This is innovation. And Nabi Sallallahu didn't do this. Some people on the 10th of Muharram, they wear the kuhul. On the 10th of Muharram, they beat themselves. On the 10th of Muharram, they remove blood from themselves. They do all those kind of things which has not been done by the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Neither the Prophet Sallallahu nor Abu Bakr, nor Uthman, nor Umar, nor Ali. No one from the early predecessors has done. You see people nowadays are doing it. Without knowledge, blind following people not supposed to be followed. Ma'tam or Matam they call it. Cooking a special food on the 10th of Muharram, bid'ah. Hitting yourself on the month of Muharram, believing either Hassan or Hussein martyred on that day, bid'ah. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam never done anything like this. Unfortunately, we might see Muslims doing these and then you find the media go everywhere and then film them, people think that this is what everyone believes. Totally wrong. On the 10th of Muharram, we fast, we break our fast normally. If your family wants to do a special food because you fasted, no problem. But to do something special for the sake of the 10th of Muharram, this is innovation. To wear a good clothes like Eid, this is not Eid for us on 10th of Muharram. It is not Eid for us. It's a normal day. We fast and then we break our fast. Normal. Some people take it as Eid. In some part of the world, they take it as Eid. Some people, they travel far to go and do this kind of innovation, innovative actions. That's, there's no basis in Islam whatsoever. So, we, there is a hadith which is fabricated. Makdhub, fabricated, which means they said, whoever on the day of Ashura, they give food and clothes to their family, Allah Azza wa Jal will give them barakah. This hadith is fabricated. It's a lie from the Prophet and people lied. So, on Ashura, the hadith about Ashura is only about fasting. Simple. Keep it simple. If anyone comes and says, the hadith of Ashura says you had to do this, you had to do a special salah, or you had to do a nothing. No special salah, no special tahajjud. No, the only thing that we do is we fast on the day of Ashura. Simple. This is the hadith of the Prophet, this is the guidance the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and this is what we need to abide for. If we want to be, to raise among the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa on the day of judgment, we follow his sunnah, how it's supposed to be followed. Why I spoke about that? Because next week is going to be, probably we'll be meeting inshallah on the 11th of Muharram, the Ashara will be over. That is the reason I have came up with the tarikh and the understanding of the Hijri, I hope inshallah we share it to others with Ibn Allah Ta'ala. Hada wallahu ta'ala a'anam. 
وجزاكم الله خيرا والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته